last October I went to Italy and I became the third American master instructor pizziolo and the first non-Italian master pizziolo in the United States at the oldest pizza school in the world. But I don't consider myself a master. I consider myself a student. I consider myself a perpetual student. And I will always continue to learn because the way I look at it, you're, you're, you're learning or you're dying. So I'd rather keep learning. Albert Gronda here, talking with Will Grant, um, well-renowned pizza master, pizza maker, and when I shoot some questions to you, how are you doing today, Will? I'm doing great, thanks. You know, we're in day one of the Pizza Expo, and it's always my favorite day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell me a little bit how you got involved in making pizza. Uh, for me, it was more of what my family got involved with. In 1984, my parents, uh, my dad was out of work, my mom was at school to be a teacher, and uh, we had been doing a backyard uh, kind of barbecue pizza kind of parties, and my dad came up with this recipe using his best friend's uh, sourdough from the Klondike Gold Rush. So we decided, hey, this is a great recipe, let's open up a restaurant. So we opened up that to some pizza in 1984, and the first day we opened, there was a line two blocks down. So. Uh, from there, we've uh, we opened five different That's of Some Pizzas within two years, and we decided to get into the fine dining aspect of things. So we opened up That's of Some Italian in, in Paulsville, Washington. But before that, we decided to take a trip to Italy. So at 10 years old, I went to Italy for two months. And every day that we were in Italy, I had a different margarita pizza in every single different town. And I really got a, a, an appreciation after, you know, four years of my life doing American style pizza, then, you know, that two months of having, you know, pizza from Italy and France. And I think we were in Denmark and Germany. And then when we came back, we actually brought a Sicilian master chef with us. So I started apprenticing under him. So I apprenticed under him for a year. Then I apprenticed under the next four chefs we had each for a year and went through the, the traditional training of a chef. And after that fifth year, I decided uh, no one in the kitchen side of things makes any money. So I moved to the front of the house and I worked my way up the front of the house. So it's, uh, it's been quite the uh, adventure. And then about five years ago, I want to take things up another level, so I went to Tony Gemiani's school in California because I'd you know, been a fanboy of his for about 17 years at that point. And uh, when you start this class, you introduce yourself and tell him your story. So here I'm telling the story. I've been making pizzas basically since I was six years old. And he looked at me. He said, you ever competed before? I said, no, I don't have time for that. And I was, I was insecure about bringing my pizzas here, but I said I didn't have time for it. And he looked at me. He said, you have, 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 have to compete. And I was like, well... The top pizza guy in the world tells me to compete, I better compete. So I got ready to go to this class and I and when actually when I went to his class I brought a manager with me. So I'm getting ready to go to Atlantic City to go do this. My manager quit. I was like, I, I couldn't do it. I dropped out. I needed a manager. I called Tony. Tony said, Willie, you need to compete. So okay, I'm on again. I'm gonna do this. So a week before the competition, my Hobart mixer breaks. So no, I can't go, I can't go. Tony says, You have to go, you have to compete. I said, okay, I'm gonna do it. I called up my friend, he came up, we worked for five hours on this Hobart mixer, we got it going. And so I took off literally two days later for Atlantic City and I ended up winning first place in the non-traditional style of pizza and my manager won second place in traditional style, making us a top rated pizzeria in the United States. So it's, it's been quite an adventure to say the least and you know, 37 years in the making and here I am about ready to speak here at a panel with Mike Bausch and Scott Anthony with you know with Pizza Today magazine about pivots from the pandemic so it's been quite a wild ride but it's you know when you look back at it, it definitely makes sense it's still making pizza you're still hanging in there and and uh, you're still trying to make the best pizza you can make right well you know last October I went to Italy and I became the third American a master instructor pizziolo and the first non-Italian master pizziolo in the United States at the oldest pizza school in the world. But I don't consider myself a master. I consider myself a student. I consider myself a perpetual student. And I will always continue to learn because the way I look at it, you're, you're, you're learning or you're dying. So I'd rather keep learning. That is fantastic. Now, Willie, tell me a little bit about sourdough because you are somewhat of a pizza sourdough master. 
I am. I, I'm the most award-winning uh, sourdough pizziolo in the world right now, which is kind of funny to say out loud, but it's true. Um, uh, when we started this pizzeria in 1984, we used the, the same sourdough starter that we use today and that I won this Caputo Cup with, you know, 37 years later. When we got it, it was 90 years old. I remember my first experience with it. I was, uh, we had opened up the pizzeria, I was six years old, and we, were, we had ran out of dough at the pizzeria, so we had to make more starter at the house. So we used this 30 gallon trash bucket, we mixed the dough in there, and my, at the time we didn't know a lot about sourdough, so my dad, my mom and dad had filled this thing up to the top. And so we, we made it the day before, it's the middle of August, you know, we're going down a bumpy dirt road, it was the 80s, so don't judge my parents. I was a six-year-old. It was my job to sit in the bed of this pickup truck and hold up this bucket of sourdough. Well, next thing you know, we hit a few bumps. Well, the gases start escaping. The top blows off the top of the sourdough starter. And it starts streaming all over my face, my arms, my legs. And I remember just thinking, oh my God, my dad's gonna whoop, I'm gonna get a whooping. So I'm scraping with my arms, trying to keep this thing from going on the ground. I finally realized we stopped, the car stopped moving. I look up front, everyone's just hysterically laughing at me and it's that same sourdough starter that I used to win the Caputo Cup in 2017. <laughs> oh, sourdough Willie. Literally, they'll call me sourdough Willie for nothing. <laughs> Tell me, <laughs> if you can, for the uninitiated, including, including myself, what is sourdough? How do you make sourdough? How does it last a, you know, 100 years? So sourdough is a bacteria. It's a lactobacteria and it's yeasts. So what happens is the lactobacteria produces acids where you get the sour flavor and the yeast produce gases which will give a rise to your bread. So when you, what you can do by farming it, you just add flour and water together and you can do this for five days, so just taking a tablespoon out of maybe a cup of each. And every day you let it grow and you take some out, throw it away, grow, throw it away. We're gonna get interrupted right now by Mr. Mike Bausch because I've interrupted him in three different seminars. He's going to interrupt me now. I'm going to hold my arm. He's going to hold, yeah, He's going to hold my arm. Go. <laughs> we right. call him Mr. La Bamba. Hey, I heard you do really good pizzas. I've heard uh, great things about you. Do, you do, uh, according you to, to me, I'm a great heard, guy. I've heard good stuff. I'm a great guy. You keep it up. You'll make it. All right? <laughs> Someday I'll make it. <laughs> so it's a pre-ferment. The idea behind sourdough is it's a pre-fermented dough. And what happens is humans aren't, aren't able to digest these grains. So by making a, a pre-ferment and letting it break down the proteins and the sugar, it actually makes it more digestible. It makes it fluffier, airier, and you can eat more of it. So it's great. It adds more flavor to your pizza. And then on top of that, you can sell more because they can eat more pizza. Yep. Oh, that sounds fantastic. And then, you know, people get confused. What's a starter? What's a poolish? What's a levain? What's a biga? It's all pre-fermented doughs. So the difference with my starter compared to a biga or a poolish is people will use instant yeast the day before and let it ferment. I don't, I just change how much water I do. So a biga is 50% hydration. That means half as much water to the flour, as opposed to a poolish is 100% flour to water. So it's just a, a difference in how I feed my flours and feed my starters is what I use. And it, it, it's different in each restaurant. So I have one restaurant that's hotter than another one. So I use a biga because it takes longer for it to ferment. I have another one that's colder. It's a big commercial kitchen. So that one I do a poolish because it needs that water to make it ferment faster in there because it's a colder kitchen. Wow, that's fantastic. I also understand that your sourdough has been added to some sourdough bank. It's a sourdough library, yes. So similar to the sourdough, or excuse me, the, the grain silos in Reykjavik, Iceland, they have a sourdough library in Belgium. After I won the competition in, for the Caputo Cup, we actually had a gentleman from Piratos, from the Quest for Sourdough, Carl De Smet his name, he flew out from Belgium all the way to the United States to Seattle and interviewed me and he ended up making a documentary movie about me and my sourdough starter and he took some of it and then he ended up actually flying up to Canada and going up the old Yukon Highway and getting two more sourdough starters before flying back to uh, Belgium and so now my sourdough starter is number 104 in the sourdough library in Belgium at the only living sourdough library in the world. That is fantastic. Is the movie still available? Will? It is. It's on YouTube. You go for the Quest for Sourdough Klondike, and I'm episode one. And you see my smiling face there, just like you're seeing it here with Albert. Okay. Well, thanks. Willie, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. How can people find you? How can they find your pizzeria? Uh, how can they taste your wonderful uh, baked goods? Oh, well, absolutely. Well, at the Pizza Expo, you can come to the Shepherd's Green booth, where I use their amazing double zero flour. And you can also find me at the Miranda Forney booth, 
But more importantly, you can find me at sourdoughwillies.com and that's the sumpizza.com. And also the Pacific Northwest School of Pizza, where I'm actually an instructor and a master instructor teaching the way the Italian methods of pizza. Thanks so much, Willie. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Albert. It's always an honor. Cheers. Cheers.